in the previous video, NLAB, we had the opportunity to complete the OSPF basic configurations on R1, 2, 3, and 4. Or did we? <laughs> because part of the requirements that we were given was to make sure that the network is choosing the optimal path. And OSPF is really, really good at it. But why is it not choosing the optimal paths in our network? That's what we're going to take a closer look at right now. And as part of this lab, let's do a little exercise. Let's identify the actual costs that each of the routers is advertising regarding their links. And we'll start with R1. And if the question comes up, well, Keith, how do exactly do we show what the router believes that its cost is for each of its interfaces? We can simply ask it with the command show IP OSPF interface brief. And that'll give us a nice concise list of the interfaces involved and the actual cost on those interfaces. So let's go to R1 on our management PC. So here on DC Nug in the lab environment with a tab open to R1, we can do a show IP OSPF interface brief, press enter, and there are our costs right here. So for each of these interfaces, this router is saying that my cost for each of those interfaces is a cost of one. So let's update that on our topology. So here in our topology, I'm going to go ahead and let's use, uh, let's use this color right here uh, for the cost. And it's a one here, a one here, and a one here. Great. That's the three interfaces. And also the loopback zero had a cost of one. Let's go over to R2 and take a look. So moving over to R2, and we issue the same command, show IP OSPF interface brief. And in the lab, I would encourage you to do these commands along with me, get that hands-on practice and interpret the results. And over here for the cost of these interfaces, we have some variables. So everybody has a cost of one, every interface on R2, except for the serial link, which makes sense. It's a lower speed interface. So cost of one everywhere except for serial three slash two. Let's update our topology. So here it's a cost of one and a cost of one and a cost of one and a cost of 64. Fantastic. Let's go check out uh, next. Let's just go down to R3 next. So we'll go to the tab for R3. Hello, Mr. R3. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. Show IP OSPF interface brief. And on R3, it has all interfaces have a cost of one except for the serial. So we can update that. Let's go put that on our topology for R3. So here at R3, it says this has a cost of one, this has a cost of one, this has a cost of one. <laughs> uh, we'll get back to that in a second. Cost of one, and this has a cost of 64. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing a problem right here. This is saying that the gigabit ethernet that's 1,000 megabits per second, has a cost of one, and so does fast ethernet 4 slash zero, which has a speed of 100 megabits. So this link that's 10 times faster is reporting the same cost as a slower interface, FA4 slash zero. And then based on that information, if we go over to R4, we can guess what they're gonna be. It's gonna be a one for the gigabit, a one for the gigabit, a one for this gigabit, and probably also a one here on four slash one. Let's go verify that. So we'll go to R4 and we'll issue that command again, show IP OSPF interface brief. And sure enough, everything's a cost of one. And so if we did a show IP route, and I'm just gonna list the OSPF learned routes. So show IP route followed by OSPF will show us just the OSPF learned routes. And I'll do a space bar to see the rest of the page. And if we pick a network, let's pick uh, 10.3. This network right here, this is one that's hanging off of R3. That's where the user is. Um, it says to get there, says Mr. R4, I'm going to send my traffic out the interface FA4 slash 1 to the next stop of 10.34.0.3. And if we go look at our topology, that is not the real most efficient path to use. The most efficient path would be from R4 going up to R2 to R1 down to R3 because that's all gigabit Ethernet and not going over the fast Ethernet path. So the big question is, and I'll put this in black here, why? Why, why is that happening? I mean, we just put in OSPF. Why is it not quote unquote behaving? And the answer to that is based on how that bandwidth calculation is done and how those values are arrived at on these interfaces. See, OSPF has been around for a long time, like I have. <laughs> and in the old days, when Ethernet first came out, it was 10 megabits per second. And we were excited about it. 10 megabits per second, woohoo! And then they went to fast Ethernet, 100 megabits per second. And then I, I, I guess we should have seen it coming, but then we went to 1000 megabits per second. But the calculation that was arrived at for OSPF when it calculates the cost on an interface is this. It's a reference bandwidth, which has a default of 100 megabits per second. 
and we take that reference bandwidth and we divide it by the interface bandwidth. So if we take, uh, for example, a really slow link, let's say a 10 megabit link, if we have 10 megabits, the result is going to be a value of 10 or a cost of 10. If we have 100 megabits and we divide that into the reference bandwidth of 100 megabits, the result is 1. So down here we have the bandwidth on the interface being divided into the reference bandwidth. And if we have gigabit, what that really should be, that should be dot 1. If we try to divide 1,000 into 100, that should be dot 1. But they just round it up. And the answer is it's just 1. And that's the reason that these fast Ethernet interfaces between R3 and R4 both have a cost of 1 based on the calculation. It's also why the gigabit is 1, because 1 is as low as they go. So to fix this, what we could do is instead of using the default reference bandwidth of 100 megabits per second, we could have a new reference bandwidth. And let's say we want to set it to 1,000 megabits per second. And if we did that, then if we divide 100 megabits per second into that, the value would be a cost of 10. And if we divided the gigabit into that, the gigabit would be a value of 1. And as a result of having the correct cost, so this would go to a cost of 10, and this would go to a cost of 10, and with all that information, the routers would start making different choices. They would say, whoa, to go around this way, the cost would be 1, 2, 3, 4, using this top path, cost of 4, where if I go down this path, the cost is going to be 10 plus one more for a total cost of 11. So as a result, the path should go through this direction up here to R2 as router 4 is forwarding packets over to the 10.3 network over here. So now that we've talked about some of the history of why the costs are not so great when we're talking about gigabit ethernet and fast ethernet being the same cost, let's fix it by changing the reference bandwidth from the default of 100 megabits per second, and we'll change it to 1,000. And here's how we do it. We go into configuration mode for router OSPF. We're using process ID 1. We'll press Enter. Oh, you know what? Before I do that, let me show you how you can verify what the reference bandwidth is that's currently in use. Let's do a do show IP OSPF, and press enter, and hit space again, and it is right here. The reference bandwidth unit is 100 megabits per second, and that's, that's our problem. That's your problem right there. So what we want to do in router configuration mode is type in auto, and the full command is auto-cost reference bandwidth with a hyphen in there. I just tabbed it out to complete it, and then I'm going to put in, instead of having it be 100 megabits per second, I'm going to put in 1,000. And I want to repeat that command on routers 1, 2, and 3 so that we're all singing from the same sheet of music. So I'm going to go ahead and take that command, just copy it for a moment, and let's go to router 1. Go into configuration mode for router OSPF1. I'll right click to paste that, enter, fantastic. We'll do it to router 2, config T, router OSPF1, and we'll right click to paste that. And then we'll do it again on router 3, config T router OSPF1, right click to paste it. So now check this out. Now that we've changed the auto cost reference from 100 to 1000, now our gigabit interfaces should show up as a cost of 1, and the fast ethernet should show up as a cost of 10, so our routers can make better decisions on what really is the best path to forward traffic through the network. Let's take a look. So here at R4, we'll do a show IP route, and let's type in OSPF, and that'll show us just the OSPF learned routes. We'll press Enter, and Let's target 10.3 again. 10.3 is the network that is sitting behind R3. And look at this. Router 4 has changed its tune. It says, well, no, to get to 10.3 network, my next hop is 10.24.0.2. It's going north up to R2. And the exit interface is gigabit ethernet 2 slash 0. And you'll notice that none of the OSPF learned routes are using that fast ethernet interface to forward traffic because based on our topology and the cost involved, that fast ethernet path is the worst one of the options available. If we go take a look at R3, and we do a show, let me just show you where that is real quick on our topology. So if we look at R3 for a moment, as it takes a look at how do I get to the 10.4 network, it should also be using the gig 1.0 interface as an exit interface with R1 as its next stop, taking that gigabit path all the way through. Let's go confirm that. And back on R3, we'll do a do show IP route for OSPF learned routes, press enter. And as we take a look at the 10.4 network right here, where our server is, this is router three saying, yeah, my next hop is 10.13.01. And again, that last octet points to the actual router number based on how we set it up. So it's using the optimal paths as well. It's also showing a cost of four to get there. 
and we could confirm the cost from router three's perspective, the cost of four to get to the 10.40 network, simply by doing the same calculation, well, a slightly less intense calculation than what the routers would do, and that is adding up the costs. So if we go back to our topology, and we look at the cost from our three's perspective, we'd have one here on this exit interface towards that destination, and then there'd be one more here on the exit interface of R1, one more here on the exit interface of R2, and an exit interface here as R4 delivers traffic to that network. So for a total of four. And one other thing that I'd like to point out is that R3, he believes that the best path is this way, to get to this 10.4.0 network. He does. However, once he sends the packet to the next hop, he's not he's no longer tracking it. He just says, well, this is the best path I believe. I'm gonna send it to R1 and it's like hot potato. And it's now R1's challenge and opportunity to forward it based on R1's routing table and what R1 believes is the best path to forward the packet to the final destination. So with IP packets at layer three, we route the packet, we forward it to the next hop, <laughs> and then we say, not my problem. And then we let the next router handle it and they make a routing decision. And that process continues as that packet is hopefully delivered across the network to its intended destination. So in this video and lab, we took the opportunity to correct a little mistake that was made because in the days where OSPF was first written, they didn't take into consideration that we might have really fast or faster interfaces than 100 megabits per second. So we used the auto cost reference bandwidth command on the router process for all four routers. We changed the default from 100 megabits per second to 1000 megabits per second, which then let the router see that the cost is different between a gigabit interface and a fast ethernet interface. So thanks for joining me in this journey through making the network optimal with OSPF, and I'll see you in the next video. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.